Hello everyone, welcome to RGU TV. Today we are talking to Sophie Stewart, a graduate from Gray School of Art, where she studied contemporary art practice. Today we're going to be talking to her about her degree show space and her practice and anything else in between. Do you want to just give me a little introduction as to, you know, who you are and what you do and what you studied in that regards? Yeah, no problem. So I'm Sophie Stewart. I've just graduated from Gray School of Art studying contemporary art practice. Cool, nice. And um, with contemporary art, is there is there certain things that you felt that you leaned more towards, like you want to specialize in more, or was there just like you like to play with all the different elements in the course? Um, I think it depends on the certain thing that I'm making at the time. So I usually start with photography to kind of get the atmosphere or get the idea going, and then I don't know, interview people, whatever kind of suits the point I'm trying to make. So yeah, whatever I want. <laughs> no, it's really cool. Um, when you walk in the space, like it's it's amazing. I, I've, I've obviously I'm part of the show as well, so I've seen other people's spaces and seen how they've been built. But when I walked into yours, I was like, wow, this is really different. Like I think I need to go through all the cap students now and just be like, what? It's such a different <laughs> vibe compared to like Condes. So it's really interesting to see how you built your space. Um, when you first walk in, I see you see a box, and I'm intrigued. Is there anything behind? Like, what's what's the box about? Uh, the box I actually borrowed, took from work. Um, it was just lying around. That when I first kind of started this year, I was interested in endurance and time pieces, and I had these boxes that I was drawing on. Like, I set myself like four hours. It's like kind of working around around the idea of shifts so I would colour in these boxes with a biro um, for hours driving myself crazy <laughs> but um, so I had this one and before um, Covid in uni I was working with screen printing so I was using varnish like screen printing words onto walls um, and then I came across the article of about unskilled workers and Boris Johnson saying that anyone that earns under £25,000 is like an unskilled worker. Um, that kind of aggravated me a bit. Obviously, it's mainly the service industries. So I kind of, you know, I wanted to make that point of it's now, you know, the service industry that's kind of still going. Mm -hmm. And um, nurses earn under £25,000 so and they nurse him back to health I just think it's very ironic so that was on the box the box was actually a toilet roll box so it kind of all fitted in with the coronavirus situation so that was the main thing I wanted people people to go and you know walk up to it see it and then have a look inside so <laughs> that's really cool that's that's really interesting and then as you're actually moving on to the left side of the wall you've got all those quotes um well well, maybe not quotes, typographic pieces about being a restaurant worker. And I, I resonate with that. I used to work in the restaurant industry, just reading those and the way you've typeset and placed it all out, it really emotes what yeah. what you want the viewer to be feeling. I don't know if it's because I've also been in that situation. And I'm just like, oh my God, this this hits hard. But do you want to tell me a bit about them, them pieces as well? Yeah, um, it was actually a range of people. So some people that I work with, um, some of them were done over FaceTime as well, because that's what happened. Um, some of them are student nurses, so working part time in hospitality. So it's just about people that have had part time jobs or work in hospitality, just the kind of probably the side that you don't see. That's kind of what I was interested in showing the kind of uh, emotional labor. Um, like it's like putting a smile on all the time and, you know, the kind of stuff that the customers aren't supposed to see what goes on behind closed doors, that kind of thing. The unskilled, I know he's referring to like people in the service industries, maybe they're not doctors or like professional professionals. I understand that's kind of the point he was making. And it was to do with the immigration scheme and people not just letting anybody in. And I think he's just gone about it the wrong way, but obviously it is kind of slightly offensive to people who are in the service industries to be called mm -hmm. unskilled because it is quite like, like what you want to believe what you do is not unskilled it's not not meaningful so it takes a lot of work it does um and yeah it's really nice for you to, to give voice to that i think um 
of um, going round past the box of when you first come in after the box you do see like a video of a man playing um, down this little corridor is there any story behind that you could tell me about um, I think well I was inspired by Douglas Gordon which I think a few people have seen that kind of dark atmosphere um, there's two the two videos are both based on similar ideas like time I think the coronavirus really subconsciously made me think more about time because there was like no time like <laughs> you were working whenever you wanted and like the late hours and stuff so it was kind of about feeling trapped as well in the job that you do um like feeling suffocated and then that video that you're talking about it does reverse so it looks like the person's peeling putting the tape back on themselves mm. um it was based on a book that i read for the dissertation the uh, either Southwood's non-stop inertia, which is kind of being stuck in a cycle of nothingness, like trying to trying to get a job. Um, he says that um, job seeking is a job itself. Mm -hmm. So it's you're trying so hard for just to even get the job. So it's that kind of thing. Like you don't realize that you're like joining in to precarity itself. It's like all kind of subconscious part of a system I don't want to say that the capitalist system but it kind of is so that was kind of the, yeah that feeling of you're not helping yourself interesting and does that then relate going on to the pieces on the right side of the wall where there's the photographs of the couple people on the pallets like taped up is that tie into that or is it a different story with yeah you? that was to do with um just feeling a bit like a number the people are in a warehouse ready to be shipped off where their skills will suit them like will suit the next workplace it's yeah that feeling of being very easily replaceable the whole room is kind of linked like a big a cycle mm -hmm. so it's like the the emotional labor and then the feeling stuck and feeling a bit worthless so <laughs> very it hits in a different way especially like seeing all those people you kind of go in and you're like what am, what am i going to look into here and then you can you kind of do tell a story with the room um so i guess that kind of goes on to building your space do you do you have in mind like what you wanted to like visualize with that and how you're gonna do it um i mean the outcome was quite similar to what i wanted the original idea was to have everything spotlit so the room was completely dark and then there would be one light coming down like a factory light to kind of highlight the box and it was all I had like 15 lights and eventually I couldn't actually even open my space because it was just a big glitch <laughs> so there was like some issues with that but everything else is pretty much how I wanted the only thing is sometimes when you do go into the space it is glitchy because there's videos running and but to be honest with what it was, I think it was a good job mm -hmm. that they did, the team did to get this up and running. So yeah, yeah, I'm I, I'm still in awe of it. I was part of the focus groups and I was sitting there like seeing them try and do all these different things. And I was like, this is really good, like what they've done. But of course, it's the struggle, like missing that degree show aspect. Um, yeah. You want to maybe talk a wee bit about when lockdown happened, like when COVID kind of took over. Um, what was the what was your situation like going from working in the studio to working from home? How did you, how did you cope? Um, yeah, I think the main thing was not having like artists or creative minds around you to throw back and forth ideas. I think that's the biggest thing that I missed. Having tea breaks when you get stuck and literally comparing two photos that are pretty much the same <laughs> and just be like this one or this one. Okay. Like you can move past little problems so easily, but when you're stuck in, a small space just looking at the same things for hours you're like right come on <laughs> like what am I doing um I was working on etchings and I was working on kind of screen printing obviously I couldn't really do that anymore so it did turn to more digital the digital side which is a shame like I've got a book of drawings that I don't even put in the degree show but it's not like I'm not going to use them for something later so yeah if you had the physical degree show do you feel like your space would have been similar or way different um compared to so if you if, if lockdown hadn't happened and you'd done all your etchings and your screen printing do you think you would have come like had a completely different outcome 
Yeah, I had some like mock-ups of what I was doing. I had like a whole wall kind of covered in text pieces and some of it was a bit more colourful. Obviously I kind of went back to black and white because I'm just obsessed with black and white. But I feel like what I came up with did reflect the situation. So I don't feel like it was a loss. Like I don't regret not really doing what I was going to do. Like I think it fitted with the situation and the work that I do anyway. So it was okay. Mm -hmm. I but like I said, yeah, a really good job. It looks so nice. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe going to like artist inspirations, um, you mentioned um, the name earlier, but was there anyone else that you like really aspire to that helped influence you this year? Um, well, this is quite, it's not quite like my work, but um, David Sherry did a guest at Grey's. His work always amuses me because it's, it's, he's really down to earth and it just, it's just silly humour, but it's like quirky. I feel like, like the text pieces that I did, they're they're quite brutal, but I think they are funny because they're relatable, and I feel like that's what his work is like. That like you can look at his silly drawings and stuff, and it is like yeah, okay, I get that. Um, probably Mika Rottenberg as well. Like I know hers, hers is really colourful and it's kind of pop arty, but it's all about kind of um, line workers and stuff like that, and like blood, sweat and tears and what are we actually making, that kind of thing. Also went down to Liverpool to the FACT um, gallery. Because when I first started, I thought my work, I was kind of not hating on technology, but this year really started with, you know, getting a thousand messages from work and can you come in early? Can you can you swap shifts? And I was like, right, this is, this is taking over my life a little bit. Um, so this exhibition I had, it was called Real Work. And they had Candice, Candice Breitz and uh, Liz Magic Laser. And um, Liz's stuff was like, what do you call it? It was people working on Fiverr and like freelance work and how it affects their life because there is no, there's not an off switch for that kind of work, which I thought was really interesting. And how like media platforms that like you could become glued to it. And then there's obviously like tracking, like you're constantly being monitored and it is like that in normal work sometimes. Um, and then the Can Candace Breitz one was like, it was about sex work and what is real work and kind of more marginalized communities. They're not considered, um, it's not considered real work so they don't have as many rights, which I thought was interesting. Um, because, and then that made me question as well, what is real work? Mm. And it does kind of get rid of your rights when people don't, it's like taboo. It, and that kind of link with contemporary art itself, because I don't feel like a lot of people think that contemporary art is like a real job or being an artist. Sometimes it's, oh, right. Okay. You're, you're one of those people. It's a bit like, hey, we're still making a living. <laughs> we're still trying. <laughs> so that was a big, I kind of pushed on some stuff. Oh, nice. Um, going going on that same kind of point um what is maybe your plans now that you've graduated um, um literally <laughs> just moved to glasgow a few days ago which is great <laughs> um i've started selling my prints of the drawings that i never put out and i'm just about to release a t-shirt which i'm really excited about which has a big unskilled on it so i'm <laughs> i'm pretty excited for that but i'm just applying for things everything i can so yeah, no, that's really good. Like, um, yeah, it's such a strange time to be graduating in. But you can, yeah. it in some respects, I think a lot more people are buying more work from artists because they want to support each other. I've seen definitely seen a lot more people like selling their prints, selling their t-shirts, and things like that. It's it's a really good time for that. Um, so it's nice. Yeah, I have noticed the community. Like everybody is up for helping each other. I think we've all kind of stepped up to help each other, which is really great going back to the photography in the room um was that post like prior to lockdown or how did you go about shooting that that was i really love the photo like photos so. <laughs> um yeah it was actually before it was kind of the one of the initial ideas i had um it's two of my classmates actually it was charlotte snow and costas and um it was part of a kind of performance thing it was another tape 
thing that I was trying out and that didn't actually work out at all. I had like brown parchment paper and it was just like, what am I doing? It was a bit of an experiment. And then when I taped them off, I was like, oh, actually, I think it looks better as photographs. And so that kind of worked out a bit better. But yeah, the, the taping wasn't going. I was being too soft as well. I was kind of, I didn't want to hurt them because it was already hurting their knees on the crate. Like when I did it, the other shoot, um, it was my boyfriend I used. I owe him because I was like, right, this needs to look more aggressive. <laughs> and like even, yeah, proper taping over his hair and stuff. So yeah, I owe everybody, I think. <laughs> it, it looks really effective. And I think your friends will be more than happy with being part of it, seeing the result, <laughs> hopefully. Um, <laughs> so I've noticed like when I was going through your Instagram, photography plays quite a big part in your work. It's just one of the mediums that that you sometimes use like you lean towards or what would you say your favorite medium to to go to is I know you say it kind of varies based on project but yeah um probably is photography like I said it's a good starting point for everything I do I just feel most comfortable with photography I feel like I actually know what I'm doing for once a little bit um it's easy to wing kind of um but I have done audio pieces I like doing stuff like that like interviewing people um, and turning that into text pieces or actual audio pieces that you can pick up I, like my work I want to not just be about myself like it's not for me it's for people like me people that feel like they are kind of st stuck in a job that isn't that great or I'm kind of stuck in a situation so I want it like I'm all for having other people's voice as my work so yeah, I just like to say, well, actually on my Instagram at stew.art.s, in my bio, it has a link to probably all the links you'll need. There's my website and there's the virtual degree show, a wee shop, whatever else. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's been a great chat. Thanks for having me. Yeah.